In this video, we're going to talk about how to write recursive scheme procedures that work on lists. So our first example is going to be a procedure that's going to allow us to build a list of an arbitrary size. We'll give it a minimum and a maximum number, and it'll populate the list with the numbers between that minimum and maximum value. We're going to call it gen number list. We'll pass a min and a max. Our base case is going to be a list with just min in it. And that'll happen if min is equal to max, or we'll also say if min is greater than or equal to max so that this will work no matter what min and max are. But if there's no numbers between min and max, then min will be the only element in the list in the base case. Otherwise, we're going to cons the min value onto the result of making a recursive call to gen number list, adding one to min so that each time we add one to the number we're adding, all the way until we get to some maximum value. So here's an example of a trace of that. If I gen number list one to five, then we're gonna cons one to the result of gen number list of two and five. To get gen number list two, five, we're going to cons two onto gen number list three, five, which when we call that, we're gonna cons three to gen number list four, five. To get that, we cons four to gen number list five and five. Now this gives us our base case, the list with just five in it. Then we con when we cons four to that, we get four, five. When we cons three to that here, for this call, we get three, four, five. And then when we cons two, as a result of this call, to the result of gen number list three, five, we get the list two, three, four, five. And then finally, we cons one to that, giving us the list one, two, three, four, five. So let's see how we would actually write that procedure. So we're gonna define gen number list to be a lambda that takes two parameters, a start and an end. Notice there is no list as our parameter here because this is going to actually create a list. And then if the start is greater than or equal to the end, then we're gonna return a list with just the start value in it. Otherwise, we're gonna cons start to gen number list. We're gonna add one to start and we're gonna still keep the same end value. So let's test this. We'll go from one to 10, we'll go from 100 to 130. And just to make sure that this works, we'll go from 50 to 40. And that should give us a list with just 40 in it. So let's run this. And you can see that first list got a little long, so maybe let's see if we go to 120, if that'll, if that'll give us a shorter list. Yeah, it does, so we'll go with that. So here you can see the list from 1 to 10, from 100 to 120. And then here, since we gave it sort of invalid parameters, it just gives us a list with that first item in it. And of course, we could, if we wanted to, add conditions to, say, return an empty list if, the, if that value was invalid. So in our next case, we're going to write a function that's going to triple every element in the list. So that's going to be a slightly different structure because now we're passing a list as a parameter. Now the general form, when we're going to work on a list and we're gonna modify every element in the list, and again, we're not really modifying every element, we're creating a new list with a modified version of each element in the original list. We'll call whatever list procedure we have, there's a car and a cutter for the list. The way we're gonna write our procedure is we're going to cons the result of applying some function to the car of the list. In our case of our triple function, it's going to be triple. And then we're gonna make a recursive call using the same procedure but just on the coder of the list. And our base case will be when we have pass in an empty list, we would just return that empty list because there's no work to be done. So here, the function we'll write next is triple list. Again, our base case is gonna be an empty list, which we don't do anything to, but if it's not performing empty, a recursive then call. we're gonna cons three times the car of the list with the result of performing a recursive call to triple list. So let's see what that looks like. So we're gonna define triple list to be a lambda that takes a list as a parameter. And if the list is null, meaning it's empty, we're gonna cons the result of multiplying the car of the list by three. And we're gonna cons that with tripling the cutter of the list. So let's try this. And let's actually pass in gen number list of, let's say 45 to 50. So here's three tests. And it looks like I misspelled that. Let me put an I there. Looks like there's no error, so let's run this. And you can see it triples every element in the list. So again, this is a really common pattern, and one you should remember, when we want to create a list procedure 
that returns a new list that modifies each element in whatever list we pass into it, we're gonna use this particular technique. So let's do another example using this technique. So suppose I wanna write a function that takes a list of grades and converts them to a letter grade. So we're gonna go from a grade to a letter. So again, we're gonna see this structure where we have a procedure that's going to return a list and we're going to apply a function to transform the car of the list and then cons that to a recursive call of the original function on the coder of the list. So let's see how that works to convert a list of number grades to a list of letter grades. We're going to take the car of the list and apply the letter grade function to it. That's going to convert a number to a grade. Then we'll take the cutter and recursively call grade to letter on the cutter. That'll convert the rest of the grades to letters. Then we cons the converted car onto the list of the converted grades from the cutter. So let's write our procedure to do that. Now, the first thing I need to do, I need to write a helper function here that will convert a single numeric grade to a letter grade. So that's this function here. It takes a grade and then there's a con statement that checks for what the value is passed in and then it converts that to a letter grade. So my actual function, grade to letter, is gonna take a list of grades and if that list of grades is null, it's gonna be an empty list because there's nothing to convert. Otherwise, I'm gonna cons the letter grade that I get from the car of the list. Okay, so here I'm using this function to get the first letter grade and then I'm going to convert the rest of the grades in the list, that's the cutter of grade list, to their letter grades, and then I'll cons all that together to get my result. So if I say grade letter 848, 939, 777, 896, 620, let's see, I think that gives us A, B, C, D, and F. So let's add a few more grades to bring up the average. And so when I run this, now I have a list of actual letter grades. Okay, so that's some examples of how to write list procedures. We'll do one more introductory example, and that'll be with list where we combine all the elements in the list to get a single result as opposed to returning a list. And that'll be in the next video.